Sounds like the same group. Some have two reasons. <laughs> anyway, if you want to pass your Christmas gifts to the aisle, uh, we'll have the ushers pick them up, and I'll, I'll wait for you. <laughs> hmm. This crowd's been dipping their, some lewds in their nog. <laughs> What? Every night, a new outfit. You like this? You are becoming a, uh, a fashion... Mm-hmm. Well, thank fashion you. plate. I needed something to pep me up tonight, because I miss Tommy. He's not here tonight. Where's Tommy? He went to see Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably did, yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming. I'm Johnny Carson. This show tonight, I think, goes to England. Or oh, it really? becomes their problem. <laughs> Speaking of Santa Claus, I do have a late report in the newsroom. Uh-oh. Senior citizen Santa Claus announced he will be not be coming this year. He just ate his reindeer. <laughs> oh, all, all right, he's, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> they bought that. He's not coming. <laughs> I've been living in California now for about 10 years. We used to do the show from New York. And Christmas out here, I love New York. I prefer New York City at Christmas time. It is not the same out here. I remember when my kids were very small. In New York, you would take them to, to Macy's or Gimbel's, right? And they climb up on Santa's lap. And they ask him for presents. Out here, you take your child to the drive-in toy department at Zodi's. And, and he shouts his toy request into a plastic Santa's face. It's uh, not the same. Are you enjoying all the television commercials for Christmas? Don't you think? I think it's a little shameless the way Madison Avenue exploits Christmas every year just for the, for the sake of a buck. I saw a television commercial last night. Showed the three wise men stopping in the desert. You heard a voice said, You spent six tough days following the star of Bethlehem. You've worked up a real thirst. <laughs> Now it's Miller time. Now, come on. Enough. That does not not show taste, right? Been getting Christmas cards already? I got a Christmas card from David Stockman. It's It's a real warm card. It depicts Scrooge laying off Bob Cratchit. That was from uh, Dickens' Christmas Carol. (laughs) Bob Cratchit was the clerk. Scrooge was the employer. (laughs) David Stockman is our budget director. (laughs) Here in the United States. (laughs) That's about all I can get out of that. Well, let's go to the news and see if Colonel Gaddafi is going to retaliate by ordering all the the Libyans out of Beverly Hills. (laughs) President Reagan has ordered all Americans out of Libya. All United States passports are being invalidated to Libya. Sorry, folks, there go your two glorious weeks in Libya. I know how you feel. (laughs) Have some good news and some bad news tonight. Uh Good news is that President Reagan and Leonid Brezhnev, the Soviet leader, are uh, planning to meet to stop the nuclear arms race. The bad news is they can't find a safe place to meet. (laughs) Well, President Reagan, as you know, the defense budget is still up there, and he wants to close, as he says, the nuclear gap between the Soviet Union and the United States. And the president's going to go ahead with plans for the B-1 bomber. He's going to deploy the MX missile system. He's going to plan a fleet of stealth bombers. Meanwhile, Nancy's at Bloomingdale's buying drapes for the window of vulnerability. (laughs) No, no, no. You don't have to take a caucus if you don't like it, just to, you know. You see the picture in the papers on television last night. Uh, President Reagan invited uh, Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill in for a little birthday party, and uh, Tip arrived with his food taster. And, uh, I like Tip O'Neill. He's a big, jovial yeah. guy, isn't he? Yeah. Tip, I get the feeling that Tip has a little. Tips a little. Just a little. Uh, <laughs> You know, he's a nice man. He had one too many at the party and tried to blow out his nose. (laughs) A little uh, medical news in the paper today. You may be in the mood for that. 
And uh, we'll, we'll find out shortly, of course. Uh, scientists are coming up every day with um, a possible new cure for, for cancer or something that may help you. Recent uh, evidence, some evidence shows that eating carrots may prevent lung cancer. Did you read that? They should, people said, should eat carrots instead of smoking cigarettes. Um, that's probably true. Um, it might kill the romantic mood a little bit, you know. <laughs> no, you make love to your wife and you stare at the ceiling and want a carrot? Uh, what is it? Folks, if you haven't finished your Christmas shopping, here's what we've been waiting for. Just in time for Christmas, another Watergate book is out by John Ehrlichman. That make you happy? I think this is his fourth book or something, and the Nixon administration was very prolific. They've turned out 45 books and 36,000 license plates. <laughs> by the way, you can see Ehrlichman, Holloman, and Mitchell uh, tomorrow night in the uh, Richard Nixon's family Christmas special. Dick's guest will be Gordon Liddy, who will hold his hand over an open candle while singing Silent Night. <laughs> if you want the ultimate Christmas gift, it was an item in the paper today that the gold Mercedes Benz that Hitler gave to his mistress, Eva Braun, is up for sale. $500,000. But think about it, it's an easy car to park in the city. It just occupies somebody else's parking spot. That's the end of the joke. It just takes over somebody else's parking spot? Okay. Invades. What? Invades. Invades somebody else's parking spot? Okay, I kind of hate to finish on that one, but uh, should have stayed with Gordon Liddy, but uh, Hitler never was a fun guy. <laughs> you just can't, that's right, that's the problem right there. You should not do jokes about no. Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun. No. Not a fun couple. <laughs> Even though they met at Club Med, just not a fun couple. Okay, I'm going to say, we have a real... Uh, well, good show. Yeah. Good show. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> two of my favorite people, two of the best actors in the business, Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau. Yeah. So stay where you are. Your name is Barbara, right? Yes. How are you, Barbara? I'm very well, thank Nice you. little frock. Thank you. And I have a shower steamer massage for you. A shower steamer massage <laughs> for me. Or a steamer me. shower. Or a steamer shower. Have, have, you ever, have you used this? I highly recommend them. Mm -hmm. What is it? What, is, what does it do for you? I mean, it... it makes you feel good. Mm. <laughs> Well, we should give this an old tryout soon. <laughs> okay, thank you, Barbara. That's very sweet of you. Now, here's a, here's a message from our new sponsor, Teledyne. Makes this. Right. Yes. 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 The audience is a story about the guinea pigs. I don't want to repeat it for the... No. Maybe later some other night I'll do it for Tell the, the story for, for the everybody, because yeah, it's a great story. Never buy your children little guinea pigs when you live in New York. Yeah. Never put them outside at night. Yes. <laughs> Boy, they were... Sudden... They were hard <laughs> as a carp. Oh. <laughs> Did you? No, that's not fair. Oh. I'll tell it for the home audience tomorrow, so you don't think we have an inside joke. I'll repeat the story for you people who missed it, but it was... What do you tell a child? No way. The little pet is, uh, yes. is not moving it's well. Stolen. stolen. Do you remember that wonderful story about where the, uh, 
The father bought his... Oh, this shows you the child's this mind. This is great. And he bought his child a little turtle, one of those right. little turtles, you know, and he brought the turtle home. And uh, this shows you kids could mm. be... You know, they say it right as it is. Yeah. And the little boy came in one day, and the turtle was lying on his back. Dead. And dead. And he runs screaming into his father, and the tears are running down his cheeks. And he says, the little the turtle died. He's dead. He's dead. And so forth. And his father, trying to commiserate with his son, says, look, son, the little turtle has died, and he's, he's going to turtle heaven, where he'll spend the rest of his, his soul has gone to heaven. And he says, I tell you what we'll do. And the kid is start. He says, we'll have some of your friends over, maybe six or seven of your friends. We'll get some, I'll hire a clown. We'll get some ice cream and we'll have cookies. We'll have a little party. We'll have some games. So we'll hire a magician just in honor of your little turtle that passed away. And now by now the kid is really feeling great. And the father goes in the next room and he sees the turtle has, is not dead, but is, is now been turned over on his back and is running around. <laughs> father goes into the five-year-old and says, your turtle's alive. And the kid says, let's kill him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's what a kid would say, right? You think I'm going to blow this party? Uh, Gerald Gardner, from time to time, has put out these books called Who's in Charge Here? I think this is the first one for this year uh, of 1981. He takes photos, compilation of photos, mainly political figures, people in the public eye, and he puts, uh, puts captions to who is saying what in the picture. We've taken some of the photos from uh, uh, Gerald's book, and we've put some of our own captions. You'll have to look at the monitor. <laughs> These are just news pictures, I guess, that appeared in magazines or, or press pictures. And uh, we put the little balloon to give you an indication of who is talking, you know, the little thing coming yeah. up. There is the, the president and the first lady, and, of course, she is speaking. And she says, honey, I've got this great idea. Why can't the poor people live in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a kind of to give you an idea yeah, of what this is about. set it up. That wasn't yeah. one of the real ones. Yeah, <laughs> It's better not to have a blockbuster at first. That's you right. Know. Where can they go, you know? There's George Bush. Oh, goody, the president remembered my name. <laughs> you kind of build. <laughs> Edit as we go along. <laughs> I'm becoming more selective as we do. There's Jerry Brown. Miss Ferguson, I wanted my letter to Santa Claus in triplicate. <laughs> President again. Uh, Menachem, let's knock off the peace talks. Bonzo's on Channel 7. <laughs> I did this joke in the, in the monologue. <laughs> when I bought all these dishes, I didn't realize I'd have to wash them myself. Could have gone too. <laughs> Not a card you'll be able to use again. <clears throat> you know, I don't get the respect. You know what I mean? That's David Stockman, that's it. Our budget director. Looking like Rodney. It's twice <laughs> Stockman has died tonight. <laughs> This will be a good one. Is this a, is this a promise? Yeah, I know this. Well, I know Washington threw his dollar across the Delaware, but hell, he wasn't 70. <laughs> you know who that is, right? Mm -hmm. That's Elizabeth Taylor. I should identify that. Yes. If you want to beef up the military, why don't you just draft my ex-husbands? <laughs> Let's kill him. <laughs> I can't help myself, Leonid. My beard wants to neck with your eyebrows. Now you're talking. Now we got it. No. <laughs> I think I smell a commie. 
Alexander Haig. <laughs> Secretary of State. <laughs> Same administration that David Stockman is in. <laughs> Should identify these people. Yes. It's Queen Elizabeth and Nancy Reagan. And Nancy is saying, that's why we have the little balloon yeah. coming out of her mouth. <laughs> Hope she doesn't find out I grabbed her crown. <laughs> You'll have to look uh, closely at this one. Yes, very closely. <laughs> this is Mesha Control. In order to recoup our investment, the space shuttle will not be going condo. This is Mission Control. In order to recoup our investment, the space shuttle will not be going condo. This is Mission Control. You just hold on long yeah, enough. Out of pity, they will. This could be a good one. Wait a minute. Well, let's see. Give it every shot. Now, Mommy, don't get mad, but I think $8,000 is too much to pay for penny loafers. You see? <laughs> um, Fritz, could you spare me five or till Tuesday? <laughs> well, those Valium jelly beans are just great. Win a few, lose a few. <laughs> Jack Lemon will be out in a moment. Walter Matthau is here, so stay where you are. <laughs> My first guest is a good friend, and I think Jack Lemon is probably one of the... If you had to choose four to five of the top actors in the entire world, he would be. He's yeah. one of the most versatile performers I have ever met in my life. He can play anything. Good morning, Jack. Now, knowing Jack, if he heard that, he'll come out and say, well, uh, well you know, I, 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 I'm really not, you know. But he won't say that either. <laughs> if he does, it'll be better than that. <laughs> anyway, he's just complete. I can't believe this, but why would they lie? <laughs> he's just, he's completed his 37th picture in 28 years with Walter Matthau, which is called Buddy Buddy. And uh, Walter will be out a little later, but first, uh, why not? Here's Jack Lemon. <laughs> Jack. How are you? I understand you were out with our producer last night I or amongst him with Mr. DeCordova? And he said that I had to wear the same suit and I had had the thing pressed this morning. <laughs> oh, Lord. I just got back from New York and I've got pneumonia. Uh, somebody told me it is really... Uh, it's very cool. You don't put your tongue on the pump handle back there. No, no. <laughs> you don't. Where is it? Put it Do you ever remember when you were a kid and uh, <laughs> you'd go out and your mother would say and you'd see something... It's to never put your tongue on anything metal. Yeah. And you couldn't resist. And you'd go over and they'd have to come and pull you off of this thing. Where's home for you originally? I forgot. Originally, Boston. Boston. Yeah. yeah. Boy, did they have snow. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mentioned this last night. You see what the poor mayor of Boston said the day before yesterday? They had a right. big snow. And because of all the cutbacks, I guess, that have happened, he said the city of Boston has used up their entire budget for snow removal last week. And that was the first <laughs> snow of the season. Boston's a great place to be during the holidays, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's one of the few major cities, really, I think, that has kept uh, enough yeah. of its tradition and, and uh, uh, the marvelous places that were, you know, when, at least when I was a kid, about 180 years Come ago. Come on, now. And, I mean, historically. Uh, yeah, they've kept it. They, they really have. But out here, I find in California, it, it's a little tough for me to get into the Christmas spirit because, uh, you know, oh, sure. you equate it with yeah. snow, you equate it with cold weather and so forth. Yeah. And do you ever think about that? Did you ever go back home? And... John, I want to tell you something. I not only think about it, is the show going to continue this way? I mean, is this what we're going to talk Our childhood. <laughs> Were you dozing off there, Jack? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, no. <laughs> Wonderful to see. No, you're How absolutely you right. That was just a little kind of get acquainted, didn't I? We didn't really need that. How's your wife? She's a oh, lot she's cuter fine. than you are. I how's yes? Uh, how's your wife? You know, look, okay, looking she's good. She's terrific. Except Wonderful. she's sick in bed, like I am. Well, it's nice as you come with all of this. Uh, huh? Did you get? Oh, you are you obvious? kidding? I wouldn't miss it. Okay, this is really moving along now. <laughs> I keep. Uh, oh, this, Lord. this will catch fire in a moment. Uh, you, you were out Don't late. Count you, he's, on the it. man's got the flu and he was out late last night, and uh, you probably had a couple. No. And, uh, no. No. Oh, oh, oh. no. Freddie did. I would. He said the same thing about you a moment ago. He did? Yeah. I don't trust well, everybody. Yeah. I think it's both our wives, is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have both been known in our days, not as much as we used to. Oh, yeah. To have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can't really. You know, as an actor, you have to experience things. You can't just do things without knowing. In other words, when you had to do for Days of Wine and Roses... Drove me to drink. Actually had to go out and... You know, I saw... Um, I don't mean just because you're here to compliment you, but I saw they were doing a retrospective of some films the other night, and they had... A, one of the scenes was yours from Days of Wine and Roses, and then they went com completely opposite that and played Mr. Roberts. And it was a wonderful oh. contrast, a one very heavy role, and then all of a sudden you were playing Ensign Pulver. And I got hysterical all over again. That's got to be one of your favorite pictures of all time. Oh, gosh, it Academy is to Wars me. Wars. Yeah. Uh, it, because, I'll tell you why. It isn't just, you know, having the opportunity, fortunately, which I've had so many times, and that's my good fortune of having a wonderful part. It, it was because I worked with Fonda and yeah. Cagney and Bill Powell, and the three of them, and it's like 20 years or something, and they're, they're still very, very close to yeah. me. This picture you made uh, with uh, with Walter, directed by your good friend, our good friend, uh, Billy Wilder. This is about the fourth time you and Walter have been in a picture together? Fourth, fifth. Fifth Fourth. Time. I directed Walter once. Well, I tried to direct him once. <laughs> that's going to be difficult. He did what he wanted to do, and it was his best performance. However... <laughs> I was going to say, that's going to be tough when you're good friends, and all of a sudden one actor is now directing another. That has to be a little dicey. Yeah, in a way. Except you have a communication that's marvelous. And I yeah. kept trying to direct. I thought, well, the crew's around, you know, and I had the puttees. And you wanted to look official. I had the pith helmet. I had everything. I'd get in a whip and everything, and I'd say, Walter, I have a marvelous idea. He said, I know what you mean. Yeah. And he'd go do it. And I never got to give the piece a direction that I thought everybody would applaud, you yeah. see. I never I never directed him. He, It's like a Mack truck with no brakes coming down a hill. You don't get out. <laughs> you don't say stop. You know, yeah. If you're smart, you get out of the way. I got out of his way. That's well, so you read each other well. Let me take a break. We're going to be back. We've got a film clip. We'll talk about some other things. And so Anything but snow in Boston. I keep trying to find out things about you, because I've known you for a number of years. Somebody told me, one of our staff, true, you were almost, or were born in an elevator, or was that one of those? Yeah. I thought it was just one of those. I was. Actually going, going up. up, but, uh, uh, no, I was born in an elevator, according to my mother. Yeah, well, she would And know. my father, except they used to call my father Lilac Lemon. Lilac uh, yeah, Lemon? Yeah, because nobody could Lilac Lemon, but, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 truthfully... <laughs> He would tell these stories because he thought they might be amusing. Now, did himself. your dad tell you the story? Did your mother say that? No, my mother... No, I, I think I was. And I got a letter from the Newton Wellesley Hospital. And incidentally, thank you for the T-shirt. I got a T-shirt. It's about this big. Made out of Jackie Lemon. Oh. It's a marvelous little thing, and it would fit when a newborn baby and everything. But uh, they confirmed it, too, yeah. I was born... It got stuck. Yeah. And uh, there I was. <laughs> I remember it vividly. <laughs> yes. What, what, you between floors? Uh, you, yeah. I just thought maybe... It did get stuck. <laughs> oh, but I still am. However... What's the other now story I hear about one of your first things you did on stage? Was it a snoring routine? Oh, yeah, I used to do that. Or whatever. I found when I was a kid, about, I don't know, seven, eight years yeah. old, I wanted to be an actor because I'd started doing a couple of things in, in plays at school, right. you know, and it worked. I think kids, I don't think it's talent will out, if there is talent. I think it's a desire to be accepted. Right. Because I know everything, you know, I'm being an armchair analyst. But uh, I really do. I think that if you stumble timing, on timing, something, yeah. yeah, you know, if you do something and other people say, hey, I liked that, right. then you say, oh, so you keep doing it, whether it's wood carving or painting yeah. or writing poetry. Or you probably also or found whatever. by doing sounds, which most kids start, you, you get attention, yeah. you do sounds, because you find yeah. that you can get a laugh very quickly. Like yes, you with the snoring sure. routine and, uh, you yeah. know, you become the life of the... Yeah. I used to do a thing in school that drove the teachers nuts. I want to see if I can still do it. Without even opening your mouth. Like, like a chicken. 
Get very close and go. <laughs> How the hell do you do that? What? That killed him in the third grade. The killed him. Killed him. What well, nuts. That's terrific. And you could get attention. And you found out yeah, by yeah, doing I that, you'd, done get, it, I done you'd that. get attention. I, I, that was the whole yeah. thing. Um, t t about the picture, the, the buddy buddy uh, with Walter. Yeah. What's it about, basically? Because we've got a little short Basically, it is show. only and singularly about a TV network censor right. who uh, is suicidal because his wife has left him. Any other character is only incidental. Right. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. That's a, there's another guy in another room. He's a hit man. And uh, he wants to shoot a guy who's going into a court courthouse across the street. And he doesn't want any attention brought, naturally, right. up to the room. Because he's going to shoot with a high power. That's uh, uh, Matthew's... Uh, uh, Whatever. Matthew. Uh, Matthew. Uh, but it's, it's incidental. He's, but I'll tell you something. In other something. words, it's in really a about... supporting part, he's not bad. Yeah. He's, he, yeah. In other words, he, he comes make, in a couple of scenes. I can spot it. I can spot talent when I see it. The guy should take up the acting. Dutch. Yeah. He's got There's a, no question. He's got he a shot. Make it. He was effective he, then. Yeah. He was all right. He's all right. What's left of him in the film. It's not bad. What? It's not bad. What's it slows the, uh, it down a little. I can understand not, that, yeah. You know. Now, in the scene we're going to see, is he in here at all, or... I don't know what you're going to say. What, what do we got? No, here? I think the scene... Freddie, am I right? It, it's... Uh, yeah. Scene? Walter has finally gotten so upset because time is getting close. At 2.22, a fella's going to come across the street right. under armed guard and get out, and Walter's got to go... Right. Across the... Out the window and everything. And I keep running in from the next room with all different ways to commit suicide, one after another. And he keeps putting his rifle away under the bed and all of that. And finally, he can't stand it anymore. Right. He's got to shut me up. I believe that that's about Okay, what it here's is. a little excerpt from Buddy Buddy. Now, what is it? I had an idea. Yes? Why don't you call her? Call who? My wife. Tell her that I tried to kill myself. Huh? Here's the number. I don't even know your wife. Well, tell her you're a friend of mine. I'm nobody's friend. Tell her that my life is hanging by a thread and that I'm slipping fast and then she'll have to come. Look, I don't seem to be getting through to you. I'm a very busy man, so don't bug me. Don't hassle me. Get off my back. You mean you're not going to call? No. Okay, the deal is off. What deal? You don't call her, I'm going to do it again. Oh, and are. again and again. I got razor blades. I got sleeping pills. You got pills. a handkerchief. A handkerchief? Yeah. What are you going to do with that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got a handkerchief. Call him to come out talking. Anyway, um, Walter, what was the name? Matt? Matthews. Matthews will yeah. be out in just a moment to join us and tell you about his part in the picture. Because he talks like this most of the time. Daddy, he will be back. <laughs> All right, here is a uh, co-conspirator in this picture. I think between both of us, we've given him really enough of an introduction, don't you? I, yeah, probably. He's a superb actor. Walter Matthau. Sit down and talk, Walter. <laughs> My wife said, don't tell any uh, toilet jokes yeah. on the... On the she, you still remember she the earthquake story, Don't tell story, any huh? toilet jokes on the Johnny Carson show. And the guy came out, one of the cops came over, and yeah. he just told me a toilet joke. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to try and tell it, oh. see if I clean it up a little. All right. Three old guys sitting around, convalescent home. Mm. One guy says, if I could just do number one... <laughs> I mean, if I could do, like, a strong number one, like, you know, not in dribs and drabs. You know. The second guy says, if I could do a good number two, I mean, a solid one, you know, if... 
the squeeze and I, it comes out, you know, it's terrible. Third guy says, I do wonderful number one, like torrential rains and pango pango. Like the Mississippi rivers. He says, that's at 7.30 every morning. And 7.35 in the morning, I have a wonderful number two. He says, like Mount St. Helens. He says, this is erupting. That's, that's at 7.35 in the morning. So the other guy says, he says, so what are you complaining about? He says, well, I don't get out of bed till 9. <laughs> I'm glad you did that here before you did it on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I mean, look, uh, you know, you're guesting on next week. Uh, did you hear... <laughs> that's a funny story. That is a funny story. Did you hear what your uh, your friend here was calling you? Matthews. Su supporting Matthews. actor, Mr. Matthews, oh, yeah, and so yeah. forth. He's a brilliant director, by the way. Is he really now? Yes. Yeah. I am? Well, Much better director than he is an actor. <laughs> Seen his, seen his work. Yeah. He is a brilliant director. That's the best picture I ever did. Koch. Yes, sir. You ever seen it? Yes, I did. He directed? Yes, I certainly did. Mom. I've seen all every picture you've ever made. I have probably seen practically every picture you've ever made, and, and also Jack. You have? Well, maybe not everyone. Just try me. You're not that old. Well, I'm almost Did old. you see Voice in the Mirror with Richard Egan and Julie London? I have, I have that on tape in my library. <laughs> no, I, 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 that was one of your earlier pictures, right? That was an earlier. Uh-huh. But any of your good stuff I've seen. <laughs> well, you admit yourself, by, by the way you said that, was not a, uh, a blockbuster, right? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I've done about four good pictures. Oh, come on now. Maybe five. Would you believe six? <laughs> Is that one you just mentioned, one of the ones you would rather forget? Everybody's got a few in there. Uh... Mm. Oh, no. No, I, um, I like to argue with directors. And uh, I remember this particular picture I was arguing with, uh, I think it was Harry Keller was directing. And finally he said to me, would you leave me alone? I'm really a cutter. And I said, Okay. So I left him alone. But uh, Richard Egan said, you see, Matthau is a New York actor. He likes to argue. And I, I've never been able to get used to the fact that a uh, group of people get together to make what is supposed to be a creative work of art. Yeah. And they don't know each other. They simply get together. Right. They, you rarely introduce to your fellow artists. And so I wanted to start some kind of a commotion in this so that I could get to know Julie London and Richard does this Egan. Help, does this help you work better if you it work does. a little bit uh, off a crisis? Huh? Yes, I'm does. serious. A lot of people have to work uh, close to the edge, they say, or walk along a tightrope. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, the fact that, that you come in and you don't know someone is... Um, it, is uh, it's dreadful. He's sleeping. You know what's happening, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, he's you sleeping. Know. The yeah. old upstaging bit. He's downstage and he's uh, I know. taking yeah, it away. The poor guy has to do something. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he's doing all the little... He's sitting here trying to be serious and he's doing playing to the audience. <laughs> no, do that? Uh, I, what I did was, um, with, uh, with Harry Keller, I said, wait a minute. I says, I can't say that alcoholism is an incurable disease. Uh, let's say that it's a disease for which medical science has not yet found a cure. Mm -hmm. And Julie London said, oh, well, that's a lot of baloney because I happen to have a friend who, who is an alcoholic and it is an incurable disease and so forth. And uh, I, I got her angry and, and that, I think, is what I wanted to do because right. then I got to know, then we spoke about it yeah. and, and, and we, and we, uh, we, we, began to look at each other and, and know each other a little better. Right. In other words, just walk on cold and not have... Yeah. 
right now. He's doing terrible things over there. We're trying to have a serious discussion. He can do it. He can do anything he wants. Art to. of filmmaking here. This kid can do anything he wants. Right. Right. Lemon. Let me do a a word from one of our sponsors here, and, and we'll, we'll come back. We're back. We're talking with Walter Matthau and Jack Levin. <laughs> talking with Sacco and Vincenti here. Uh, it's way back. Um, I saw a picture of you in the uh, paper the night before last. You were at a function in tuxedo, and you were wearing what a lot of people have worn at one time or another, one of those cervical collars. And you were walking around like this. Was, uh, was everything all right? It hurts every once in a while. Yeah. During the picture, I had to slide down a laundry chute. I had to throw him down the laundry chute to escape from the cops. And uh, it looked like a fairly simple job. It was about four feet. Right. And the grade wasn't more than about 15%. And we're supposed to land on uh, a bunch of mattresses. And the mattresses are on top of a scaffold, which is about 10 feet high. I didn't realize it was on a scaffold. I simply thought I'd hit the mattress and that was it. Mm -hmm. Well, I kiddingly said to the director, Billy Wilder, I said, now, well, I can't, I, I, I can't do that. You want me to throw lemon in there? I, the poor guy will get killed. He said, no, 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 no. This is easy. Just do it. Listen to me. Don't argue, please. How, said, would, okay. Billy, how would Billy say that? Couldn't he say? No, I said, no, please, don't. You know, he <laughs> talks with a Stuttgart accent. Thanks so much. And, uh, and uh, he, I said, well, let me test it out. I went down, and the thing is, that when I was a kid, I was always afraid of those sliding uh, uh, gadgets. What do you call them? Sliding slides. ponds? Call them slides. Slides. I was always afraid of that. And I... Slides. Slides. And I, I used to uh, hold on like this. And this is what I did. I didn't want him to go for it because he wouldn't be here now. He'd be dead. And uh, I hit the mattress and went head up in the air and acted like a trampoline and landed on here busted a few bones, separated the clavicle here, and there I was in the most severe pain. I was in such pain that when the prop man came down, I know he, he carries a gun, and I said to him, Joe, please, shoot me. That's painful. That's very painful. It was that painful. Lemon was white as a ghost. He ran down, and he took off his jacket, and he rolled his jacket up, and he put it under my head, and he said, are you comfortable? <laughs> and I said, I make a nice living. <laughs> I've got a few dollars. <laughs> You're going to look at me with a straight no. face and do that, aren't you? No, <laughs> no what I, I really dollars. said, no, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> but what I really said was, that's a joke. Yeah. But what I really said was, Jack... It's curtains. Yeah. I you really thought? thought? That's what I said. I never expected to live more than another ten minutes after that. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was in the most vile pain. Just terrible. But the marvelous thing is he, he loves the English language and the use yes, of the I know. English language correctly. I mean, you know, he like in the dressing room earlier this evening, he was saying, what about, what was that marvelous word you came Oh, the with? tautological things. I have right here. Tautological. Tautological whatever. things. And if a writer writes baby a cliche. Puppies, baby puppies. It's tautological. Baby, repetitions. Okay. Anyway. Tautological. Baby okay. puppies. It's okay. also redundant, right? Redundant. 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 Yes. Anyway, the point is he is